How far did you get with your education? 10th grade. I went to jail after that shit. Charges that you were able to beat? Nah, I wrote three years. Charges you faced as a juvenile? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Care to share what you were convicted for? Everybody saw it on a peace officer. And where'd you have to spend that time at? Um, juvenile, shit. Yeah, I started in RYDC and then I went to um, YDC. I got locked up, goddamn. Shit. Some shit happened on the east side. My partner getting jumped on and got down. Shit, we, we was only two deep. It was just really me and him. And like 10 niggas jumping him and shit. I tried to go down there, like help him. Like really tried to break the shit up at first. And it mixed me trying to break it up. Them niggas looked at me, kind of bucked that man and shit. And I got down with the fire. And when I whipped the fire, police right there. I ain't even know. It was so many people down there. I whipped the fire. Police right there. My partner pushed me. I'm like, the police, bro. And I like, well, and then I turned around. As soon as I turned around, he up. And then I up, but I forgot. I, I, my mind was going too fast. We both up, but he up like all the way, like up, up. Like. And I just looked at him and I turned back around trying to run. He just went to him, bah, 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 bah. hit me in my arm, then he fought around and hit me in my side, then my leg, and then hit me in my back. And then when I fell, I just locked up, my body locked up. I just fell, boom. Shit, me blacked out. Me going to the hospital and this, I remember type shit. And then I, when I got in the hospital, I woke up, I seen the, the, the TV news on and, it, and then they were talking about the shit and all this shit. Then I got locked up. Well, I got out the hospital. I ain't stay. Cause you, you know, juvenile, they don't lock your, they don't lock your, they don't put your handcuffs while you're, while you're a minor. So, so and so kept in my ear saying like, but them folk, you know them folk gonna come get you, bro. Like, tight. So, shit, I stayed enough for like a week or some shit, not knowing they finna come get me after this week. I'm just knowing the back of my head, like, bro, he finna come, he finna come get me. And I ain't talked to my probation officer the whole time, so I was like, I know they finna come get me. So I just ended up leaving like the eighth day. I stayed in that week, left the next day, type shit. And I left, and I was in the car, got down with my partner, who I made a tape by. God rest his soul. I was in the car with him. My back was draining and shit. This is how I got caught. My, my back was draining. He had a, he had a car beam. And I told him, turn the music down. By the time I turned, we stopped at the light. I told him, like, turn the music down. He turned the music down and got down. Police got down, whip up on us. About the music, they hear, they hear car beat. He whoop up on us and got down. He looked at me like, damn, like, you just jinxed that nigga. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know the fuck I did, nigga. You, I told him my back draining. That shit would hurt my back and shit. So, police pull us up, we get over. Got down. They pull us out the car. Well, they pulled him out the car, and I just remember him yelling, like, he got shot. My little brother got shot a couple days ago. In my head, I'm like, I can't run, I can't do none of this shit. It's over with. So, goddamn, they trying to get me out of the car, and I'm telling them, like, shit, I got shot. And they kept saying, like, get out of the car yourself, you might got something on you, and woo-woo. Like, bro, I don't got nothing on me, but I've been shot. They were like, well, just tell us your name. And I told them my name and shit, and they knew. I was talking, like, this the boy had an incident with the police. Woo-woo. And they, and, and, um, the sergeant walked up, some shit. The sergeant walked up and then he grabbed me, he was like, yeah, yeah. And he put me on the car and shit. They ain't picked me in handcuffs at first. But they, um, them niggas started laughing. They were like, yeah, nigga, yo, ain't going down, ooh. Just talking all that shit. They, shit, they locked me up. Just rolled three years. Rolled three years and got down. 
got out type shit. When I got out, bro started rapping this shit. And shit, it was on from after that, after I got out. It was up then and shit. I ain't had to be in no more trouble after that shit. I started laying low, started being wise and moving, moving carefully, like, thinking about what I be. Think about what I'm, what I'm, what I'm doing. Like I think now. Back then I ain't think. I was just doing shit because I was on some young nigga shit. Just now, as I be on that shit, like think about what I'm doing before I do it. Cause I, I, I looked at that shit like I. There's a reason why I got shot. Type shit. Moving, not thinking about what I was doing. But now, why shit? Like, being there three years and shit, shit make you think about shit. Like, Get you right, like especially your mind. That shit get you right. Like, I'm gonna get on the street, man. Get me some money and stay out of the way. But I'm handling my business. How I handle my business, but getting shot, going to jail, should make you think. Should make you think. Like, move carefully. That was the first time you were ever shot. Yeah. First time. Now, for somebody watching this that has never experienced that, getting shot, what does that actually feel like? like slow, like a slow ham, I mean slow ham, like, motherfucker just hang you, boom. Like, wherever you get shot at, it feel like slow ham. If it hit you, you're on a bit. It feel like somebody just, just hang you, just boom, boom. Shit hurt, all that burn, shit like how people like, bro, that shit burn me. I ain't, that shit, I ain't burn me. It just felt like I was just getting hit, hit out hard. Like when I got hit in the back, I, she feel like you know all the breath at me, and that shit fuck fuck around and lock your body up. Like you get in the way in your body and shit, shit to lock your body up, especially your back. That shit lock my body up and I fell straight to the ground, bump my chin though. Like, that shit hurt though. It hurt. That shit hurt. Do you know what type of bullets it was? Forty. Do you know if it was a hollow tip or just a regular bullet? Yeah, or? I don't know. Whatever the police carry. But no, that shit, they carry 40 or 45. Oh, I mean, them are the guns I know the police carry. But I don't know what type of slug, I mean, shell thing, whatever the fuck that shit called. And uh, were all the bullets removed from your body? Nah. The ones, the arm, the, the shit in my arm, that shit went in and out. Shit in my leg, that, that shit little fragment. And the shit in my back, still that like, ain't going on my chest. That shit still stuck inside me. Can these bullets ever come out naturally? I wish this shit in my back, probably. I wish this shit didn't come out. But now that through my chest and shit need to come back out of my back. I don't know, that shit might fuck something up. I hope shit, I don't know. I hope that shit don't come out. Do you know why those bullets were never removed? Or the fragments were never removed? It was too close to my spine. And one of my leg, yeah, they, yeah, they took them out. They took the fragments out. But I they left a little pieces in my leg type shit. And do you feel any side effects or complications from those bullets or fragments still in you today? Yeah, if I, I get to finding some shit, my right arm might lock up, like, it'll get stiff. But that's it. Uh, breathe too much cold air. Breathe too much cold air. Yeah, yeah, that shit, that shit hurt. You feel it, feel like something inside your body type shit. Because one night I got down, was at home by myself. And I had, I had the whole house just cold. I was breathing in cold air. Yeah, that's how I found out being at home by myself. And it was cold, and I ain't fuck with what was wrong. Then I ended up calling my mama and shit. And she was like, you got your house too cold. My head, yeah, she was like, that, that bullet. And I found that. And then my auntie, she a nurse and shit. I ended up calling her and shit. She was just like, yeah, that, that bullet, bro. But you need to have your house on regular temperature or have it outside temperature. Cause breathing cold air, that shit gonna, it gonna hurt. It gonna hurt. And for time reference, it's March 2021. Care to share your age now? Yeah, 26. 
twenty two, yeah. My birthday got down um, right around the corner, in April, April fourteenth. And I can't remember if you said this already or not. I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you say something? No, you good. Okay. I don't I can't remember if I asked you this already. I think you told me it was tenth grade, but do you remember what age? I don't know if I asked you what age you were when you got shot or if you mentioned it already. I shot fifteen, sixteen, some shit like that. How about fifteen, sixteen? What about this? Is it uh you've flown on airplanes. Yeah. You've been through the airport. Yeah. Through the military to go out. Yeah. Off. Is there an nah, issue with down, that? Down, nah, that don't be going up. Nah, nah, that don't be going up. I want. I, I said that shit when I first flew. I like now. I wanted this shit gonna go out. I think you gotta have. If you go through that little shit, the little X-ray shit, you might see that shit. I don't know. I ain't never asked nobody. Like, now, even though you you do three years mm. incarcerated as a juvenile. Do you just do you are do you further your education past that yeah. tenth grade level? Yeah, see, in juvenile you got to go to school. In juvenile they're gonna make you go to school. But um, I I ended up trying to get my GED while I was in there though. And shit, didn't get it. Didn't get it. And if I would, if I did get it, probably I probably got came home early. But I didn't get it. I was. Doing the same shit that I was doing on the street, just young nigga shit, just, just doing shit. While I was in there, I wasn't thinking about it. But I should have got that motherfucker though. You didn't even attempt the test. I did one time, I failed. Cause you gotta make a 14 back then, back, back, back in them days. You gotta make a 14 on every subject. And, and you gotta pass like five, five subjects. And I, 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 I think I failed like two, three of them. You got, you got to pass like five of them, like four of them. I don't know. You got to pass some subjects, and I ain't pass all of them. And then shit, I just stopped. Like man, fuck that shit. Started back doing bad shit in jail, and they be fighting and all this shit. Now you did mention that when you did hit the ground after you had gotten shot, you blacked out. You said. Yeah. When you blacked out, was that a point where you're just passing out from the injury or was there a point where you could have died and the blackout was maybe something of that nature? I don't know because I, I, don't, I don't know. I ain't no doctor. But I, when, when I blacked out, I don't know. It, it probably was just some shit like, because I went in shock. When I, when I blacked out, I woke up when I was in the, in the truck. Did I, I think I, I don't know. I remember when I woke up, when I woke up. I went panicking and I went, I went and shot. I just woke up on just like what, what happened? What just happened? And folks just tell me like, damn, you ain't been shot. Ooh. I like, damn. I just felt so tired. I was just tired here. Like I'm ready to go to sleep. Some people just wake up panicking and shot. And I don't know. I woke up on some. Like, damn. But I told my black dad. I told my mama to my life. Black dad. I don't know. Because when you say you black out, I'm wondering if that's just your body's natural reaction to maybe shutting body. down your body to save your body, or were you on the brink of death? I probably blacked out because I hit the ground. I probably blacked out because, you know, when your, your head hit the ground type shit, it hit too, something too hard, you black out. I don't even think it was because, yeah, I blacked out because I hit that ground. And I ain't had no control of my body. Cause I just move my arm like no, my body feels stiff, and I just, just feel boom. Yeah, cause I feel, when I feel I black out. It had been that in the ground. And when you wake up, you're in a truck that's getting transported to the hospital. Yeah. Like you're in an ambulance. Yeah, or... ambulance. Okay. Now, when you do get arrested after you, you leave the hospital after eight days, you know, you're, was it Larry who you yeah, were referring to? Okay, yeah. Larry's driving, he's got the music too loud, you get pulled over, not you personally, but Larry does, you're in the car, and then you get apprehended at that point. Yeah. Do you get the proper medical care for those, those, those uh, sh shooting wounds, those gunshot yeah. wounds? Yeah, now my mama came up, I snapped, I went straight to Pennsylvania after that shit, and I had push pack, you know, the bandage that they 
they when they the day they locked me up, I still had that same, you know, every day you gotta somebody gotta come in there and nurse you, like clean you up and shit. My sister used to do it. She and I ain't had that shit while I was in jail. So they left that shit around my my um cause I had a chest tube too though. My chest tube called Puss Packet while I was in there and shit, cause I ain't had a nurse. So they, when they left that bandage on me, I get like five days, I start getting push packed. And every time I touch my chest, shit would hurt. And I ended up getting a phone call and I went and told my mom like, damn, this shit, this shit hurt. And she was like, what, your back? Your leg or what? I was like, nah, the shit that um, when I had the, um, the chest tube in. And she was like, why? She was like, unwrap it, you ain't unwrap it. I said, nah, I ain't gonna lie. Every time I get in the shower, I wash myself under the bandage, like the open surface, the under the bandage. I leave the bandage on. She was like, well, just unwrap it and, and see why it hurt. If your chest got like bruised, like red shit on it, tell the medical people. And um, I take the shit off. And I, it was hard for me to lift my arm up. And when I lift my arm up all the way, this shit would hurt. My little partner was looking at me like, bro, it's some white shit, like, over your wound. I like, because of the bandage? He like, nah. He said, it was some other shit. It looked like when you scrape your knee. He was like, when you scrape your knee, that's how that shit looked like. It ain't any blood. It just looked like dried up, like dried up um, scars type shit. And then I told him, like, get a, like a towel or something to, to mail with it. But as soon as he touched it, I Ah, shit, that shit hurt. Then they end up, end up telling JCO, like, damn, my shit hurt. Ooh, my, my chair hurt. She was like, what, you can't breathe? Like, nah, man, my shit leaking and, and it, ain't, it ain't just red. It got down. This shit white and shit coming out. I went to the medical and shit. And um, the medical people, um, they called home, like, he got puss packed. Did the, um, did the, um, Grady give him something? to clean it with it, and I'm asking them like, nah, y'all medical, y'all supposed to have all this shit. So my mom was like, I'm gonna come out there anyway. So they gave me a visitation, when it, when it, it wasn't even visitation day. My mom pulled up, like, my mama came, and she, she asked to see me and shit. She cussed they ass out, I went to the visitation shit, she cussed them out. They had um, the hospital people come to the jail, and they cleaned the shit out, and they gave, they usually them supposed to give you Real pain pill while you in juvenile, but they ain't up giving me real pain pill and all that shit. And then they scrubbed all that shit off, like scrubbing out, they scrub all that, scrub it out, and then they cleaned it and shit. I was straight after that. But they was, I don't know, I think it was the juvenile, that was their fault though. Cause they supposed to got down, they know I got shot, they know I had the bandage on me, and all that shit. They still ain't like, they supposed, they supposed to got down. Stayed on that shit. Shit, them folks let me get down. Stay on the door knowing I got shot. Now, I don't know. That shit was crazy. Shit was weird. I, um, I also asked um, in this interview, uh, you know, where you were stationed at or institutionalized uh, during the three years. And you had mentioned a couple Why? places. YDC? RYDC mean like? The counties out here, you know how they got the Cal County Jail, but for um, juvenile, like RYDC for Pantherville, they got YDC is like the juvenile who down the road type of shit. I was in the RYDC at first, I did like two years, I did like two years in RYDC and I did like all the rest of my time in, in YDC, but I would end up back and forth from Different like YDCs. I went to like four or five YDCs. That shit kind of made my time come back, go back fast too. Just moving place to place. You know how that shit is like. Why the different moves? Why were you getting moved? Fine. Probably in that, I'm fine everywhere. Starting right. Just fine. It like every couple months, I'm fine. Fights you would initiate or you were defending yourself? Young nigga shit, probably starring. Just starring shit. And he gotta be with no, the other young niggas. It might be with the JCOs. Might flip out. I might 
jump on the rail, jump on the TV and shit, flip the whole dorm, flipping the chairs and all that type of shit. shit. That shit get you sent out. Some niggas want to goddamn get shipped out, because sometimes I was doing that shit to get shipped out. Because when I was in Metro, they ain't want to let me go nowhere. But I, I kept just flipping the whole dorm, just down there every time I came out of the room, flip the whole dorm and jump on the TV. I down there sitting in the room the whole time I was in Metro. I did like eight months in Metro. What schools did you attend growing up? First school, D.A. Stan, and then I went to East Lake from um, first grade to um, fourth grade. And when I got in fourth grade, I went to Person. And I turned around and came back to the East Side and went to Avondale, Avondale Middle. And that by the time I was in sixth grade. What about high school? On the hemp. I ain't can't go to no regular school. And these were all public schools? Yeah. All right, the hemp is an alternative school. But it's a public school too, though. But the hemp was an alternative school. I can't go to no more regular schools, though. I was kicked out of some school district when accepting and nigga behavior. So they were like, hell, no, nah, you can't. Like you can't go. I can't go to Fulton County um, School District, and I can't go back to the Cap County School District unless I go to one of the alternative schools. And my mama always stay on the east side, so I went to them. That's how. That's how the, the schools. When they kick you out of on in the Cap County, if you get kicked out of your school, you going straight to them. And there were everybody going to like everybody who got down in the Cap County. What were you kicked out initially for? Mm, fine, uh, fine or some shit, uh, probably not going. My um, PO them, I just keep coming up here, and the principal beat that. The principal got now signed out like he's he keep having his probation officer come up here, keep getting locked up up here, shit like that. And then they just get tired of your ass, like man, he he can't come up here no more. Now, for somebody that's not familiar, what's the difference between alternative school and regular public high school? Um, shit, alternative school life for all the bad kids. I you know, just bad as hell. Uh, if you just get kid out of school, period, you going straight to alternative school. But is there a difference other than just bad kids? Is there a difference in the actual school? versus, is there a difference between the actual alternative school and the regular public high school? No, nah, I ain't no I mean, it's just, just a good and bad okay. type shit. Because the school act different don't change, because everybody, it be some smart motherfuckers that's just bad, they might just be in alternative school. So they ain't really got nothing to do with that. So what kind of kid were you in class overall speaking? How would you describe yourself? I had an angle problem. It'd be bad and shit. I don't know, Clag, I just had a fucked up ass attitude. I gotta get mad. I ain't know some shit. I don't know, I just get mad about everything. I hate, I hate the bullies. I might get into it with the bully, the, the nigga who act like they the toughest nigga in the school, or who act like they the toughest nigga in my class. I'm getting into it with them niggas and shit. I ain't got no problem with the class clowns and shit. That might be my partner. That might be my little partner. But I'm the nigga who trying to whoop your ass if you act like you just the biggest nigga in our class and you just whooping everybody's ass. I'm that nigga who gonna try your ass. Where do you think the anger issues stem from? Are you able to pinpoint that? Oh, my mom, my mama, she thought we were like, your daddy, your daddy got down. Your daddy attitudes are always fucked up. My dad died a long time ago, so I don't really want to know. But she used to always be like, well, yeah, that like your daddy and shit. And shit, only reason I you can get mad at school because shit, I just didn't want to go. <laughs> Back at elementary school, around middle school 
time, that when the anger shit came. Cause like she in elementary school, I had to act good to play football and shit, and I used to like playing football. The middle school kid in, like nigga I'm smoking. I don't wanna do that football shit no more. And then it's like, I don't even wanna go. Ain't even no reason to go. And shit, I used to get mad. Like, man, before I do do I got to go to school? And shit, just kept asking myself, like, man, dude, I ain't got to do this shit, woo woo. And when I go to school, angry as hell. But I got a, I got a big cousin that, that kept me on that shit, shit. Nigga more gangsters nigga around me, like. But that nigga used to, he the smartest nigga. He ain't got no sense. That nigga the smartest nigga. That nigga used to do my homework and shit. He used to be that nigga. He'd be like, bro, just go to school, bro. Go to school. If it wasn't for him, I would probably never. Man, fuck this school shit. Middle school. Like, fuck that shit. I ain't got to go. It was him that made me go to school down there. If I wasn't suspended, I, I'd go because of him. And Chevy is cousin on your mother's side or father's side? My mama's side. And he is with us to the side of us on this interview. Yep. Yep. Is what he's saying accurate? Yeah. Yeah, cause I got a cousin that, um, he on my, um, my mom, like, she, I got a cousin that, I got an older cousin named Daisy. And, um, that is Chevy, like Grandma Peggy. This is this date. This her cousin, them type shit. And this on my mama's side. 